Hi guys, this is an automation tutorial on camshaft profiles, variable valve timing, and variable valve lift, also known as VVT and VVL. So, let's get our engine started. Now we're going to use a fairly modern engine design for this, unlike the turbocharger tutorial. So we'll choose a dual overhead cam V6, all aluminum, and we'll worry about the VVL later because that's more complicated. But we'll do a we'll do a fairly large engine. Do a 3.8 liter, I think. There we go. So let's get everything started. We can use uh, we'll just use we won't use low friction cast. And I'll turn that off for now. Direct injection, everything fairly bog standard. We'll make it more eco minded, I suppose. And here is our engine. Nothing's tuned, of course, but it doesn't really need to be. So, the first thing we'll look at is one of the first settings you'll be changing after you've got your engine all set up originally is the cam profile. So the cam profile determines where you're going to be getting torque throughout your operating range. So with a higher cam profile you're getting torque higher up in the RPMs so you know up to six even seven thousand for a very high cam profile but you'll be getting less torque low down up to like three or four thousand RPM sometimes as low as two if you're doing a really low profile. What a cam profile changes is where the valves are opening and closing in a standard four cycle automotive engine. So during the intake and exhaust strokes in particular, how long they're going to be open isn't necessarily affected by the cam profile and automation. I'm not sure of the specifics of that but it definitely affects when they open, which is very important. Now, a higher cam profile is generally used in sportier engines because you're going to want that high RPM power to accelerate quickly and keep yourself within the power band. Now, a lower cam profile, on the other hand, is going to be used for more eco-minded engines because it's going to allow for less stalling, because you have more torque low down and it's going to be a more efficient engine but what you should also note is that a higher cam profile actually reduces your octane value and allows for more compression more ignition timing different turbocharger setups whereas you're going to have to run a lower compression value with a low cam profile because your octane value is increasing now so you're going to want to keep that in mind in general, 40 is a great starting point. I can see why they picked here for a normal engine. You can't go wrong with 40, really. If you're making an average engine, you can do anything from a 1 liter 4 cylinder engine from the 60s to a 3.8 liter V6 meant for, you know, a somewhat performance minded sedan. Think, uh, you know, a V6 uh, mid size, something like that. An older style of sports sedan before turbo fours became popular. You can even increase this if you're going for like a Focus RS, Golf R vibe. Um, you can even increase this if you're not going for that much performance, if you think that you have enough low end power. Probably a good idea for something like a V8 where you've already got lots of low end torque to work with. So play around with that a little bit, get a good idea of what it's at. For supercars you're going to want this as high as it'll go. You will notice though, if you're in earlier years for your model and variant, then you can only increase it to a certain point before you're actually limited by your bottom end at this point, not your top end. So you will lose power due to the inefficiency of the cam profile and the fact that your bottom end can't actually take the amount of power that you want to put into it. Now we're going to look at what VVT does. VVT is very, very simple, but it sounds complicated. Now, normally, if you're running a inline engine, you're just going to get one VVT option. And that's just going to be 
on, or sorry, if you're running an SOHC setup, sorry, it has nothing to do with the engine configuration. You're going to only get one option for this, because you only have one camshaft setup. Um, I believe you can use VVT on a pushrod engine, although I can check here. Uh, pushrod. Yes, you can. I was right. So you can use VVT on any engine configuration, as far as I know, VVL or not, turbocharged or not. And what that does is it uh, slightly changes when your can when your valves, sorry, are going to open by uh, in older cars mechanically moving the camshaft up and down to engage different lobes, or nowadays it can be even electronically controlled uh, in the valves themselves and the tappets. It gets fairly complicated, but what it does is simple. When you have VVT it changes everything so it opens differently based on RPM. It's great to have, it does cost a fair bit in engineering time, but you should really consider it, especially on higher performance engines, because it will aid in efficiency, as you could see, and it will aid in increasing power, especially with high revving engines. Now, for the more complicated one, We'll get rid of our VVT, and we'll go back here, and we'll enable VVL. Now, you can't enable variable valve lift on a five-cylinder engine, and you can't enable it on a pushrod engine, but you can on a DAOHC, a single overhead cam of any valve configuration, and a dual overhead cam with a two or four valve per cylinder configuration. VVL is amazing. Once it's available, you should start really trying to engineer an engine with it, We'll, uh, we'll add in some forged pistons here, because the stock value really increases your camshaft profile. What VVL does in automation is allows you to run two different camshaft profiles in one engine. In real life, uh, certain engines, the only one that comes to mind is Honda's VTEC system, can allow for three camshaft profiles, but automation doesn't simulate that, so you don't have to worry about that. So. It looks like it's complicated, because you know, changing this value changes things, changing this value changes things, but it's a lot simpler than you think. All this is, is a second cam profile that comes online higher in the rev range. It changes everything from opening duration, opening time, everything involving the valves and where they come in the force cycle engine. So, let's think about it this way. Let's say you want uh, good fuel efficiency in a car, but you'd also like it to be fairly powerful. You want to be able to get 35, 40 miles a gallon, but you also want it to be okay as a weekend car. You can lower the camshaft profile to 30 or even 25. You can see there's lots of low-end torque available for you here. And we can put the VVL profile at something like 45, 50. So you're getting the best of both worlds here you're able to get low RPM power and high RPM power, which is incredible. It's a great technology. Pretty much every manufacturer is putting this in all of their newer engines made since the 2000s. Honda started putting it in their cars in the, I believe, 1989. VVT came a bit earlier. They started using that in the 70s, I believe, Alfa Romeo but it started becoming mainstream in the 80s. So, a uh, good idea is 2550, 3550, you can even do something like 2040 if you're doing a very economy-minded car with an advanced engine. You can't change VVL as an engine variant. You have to stick with it if you're choosing it in your engine family, so keep that in mind. And it costs a good amount of engineering time, 24 months. So, you're going to want to stick with this engine for a little while, don't under-engineer it. Uh, for a more powerful car, say, you could even keep the cam profile at its stock value, and, oops, sorry, I need to increase that, at its stock value of 40, and increase the VVL profile as high as you want. This way, even in a high-power sports car, say you're making, you know, a Porsche 911 competitor or something, you can still get good fuel economy, people can take it to work or whatever, go on a drive with their kids and not worry about guzzling gas, but when they want to take it out on the track 
on some twisty country roads, they've got a lot of power available to them. So this is, this is really important that you configure your VVL and cam profile accordingly. I usually wouldn't say go for 40 at stock unless you're doing a sports car on your cam profile, just because you, you can get so much better fuel efficiency if you just change it down a little bit. 30, 35 if you're really pushing it. But it's a good thing to mess around with, see what values work best for your car, and keep going through that. VVT, you can operate at the same time as VVL, just as useful, but it won't make as big a difference as it does when you're using it in a standard non-variable valve engine. So VVT makes the biggest difference of all if you don't have VVL. It's up to you whether you want to put it on a VVL engine, Frankly, I don't think that it's worth the long engineering time. Maybe you'll just go for it on the intake. Obviously, if you're in an SOHC or an OHC engine or a push rod engine where they only have one cam to worry about, at least uh, one cam per bank, then it's going to cost you a little bit less in engineering time. Uh, around the same, I believe, as just going on the intake cam on a D DOHC engine. So, that pretty much covers cam profiles, VVL profiles, and VVT. Remember, increasing your cam profile will, you can see this better with VVL off, will increase the RPM at which you reach peak power at and decrease the amount of torque that your engine can put out. So you're not going to want it on a truck as high, you're not going to want it on an SUV as high, it's it, it's really better in the low end range and a lot of people don't get that more power isn't always better if the torque curve doesn't line up properly so i hope you found this video informative and i'm hoping that this will help you make some better cars in automation thanks for watching everybody and i hope you enjoyed it